If you follow me on Instagram or my TPT store, you know that just this past week I finished up my literature circle binder and posted it for sale. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys all about how to implement literature circles in your classroom, whether you're an upper elementary school teacher or a primary school teacher. First of all, if you don't know what a literature circle is, it's a small group of students that meet to discuss a piece of literature in depth. It seems to me that a lot of people think that literature circles can only be used for upper elementary and above, so fourth grade, fifth grade, middle school, and then high school. However, I am a second grade teacher and I personally use literature circles in my classroom for my higher level learners and I've had a ton of success with it. Like I said before, literature circles are a great way to engage your students in a text and to promote higher levels of thinking. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my literature circle binder and then how I organize all the materials for my students. All the pages I'm going to be showing you are part of my literature circle binder pack on TPT. I will have a link to it down in the description. I definitely recommend you check it out if you have never used literature circles in your classroom before because that product has everything you need in order to get started. I tried to make my literature circle binder as versatile as possible so it's pretty flexible. You could use it up to eight students in a group and then you can use it for any length of time between six weeks and 12 weeks for a particular book. Now you're probably not going to use every single page in the pack because like I said I did use it for a variety of number of students and for a variety of number of weeks. So you'll have to pick out the pages that work for you, but I'm going to show you how I set up my literature circle binder. Now, because I'm in second grade, currently I'm only running one literature circle and it's with my higher level students. However, after about halfway through the year, I will be starting a literature circle with my next level of students, so I will have two going at the same time. I personally like to keep separate binders for each group. I organize all of my guided reading groups and my literature circle groups by color. So I have four groups in my room. I have a pink group, an orange group, a green group, and a blue group. By organizing my groups by color, it makes it much, much easier for me to keep all of my materials for each group organized. So for my literature circle binder, it does come with a cover page. It's just black and white, but if you choose to organize your groups by color, you can just print it on colored paper and that will help keep your binders organized for each group. So I'm going to show you all of the pages that are inside of my binder in the order that I personally keep them. This is not the only way to do it. I'm just showing you the way that I personally implement it in my classroom. So the first page that I have in my binder is this group information page. So it's just a snapshot of all the information. So on the top I have all of my group member names and then I do have their level. And then at the bottom is a little bit of information on the book that we're doing. So the title, the author, the level of the book, total chapters, total pages, the theme of the book that I really want to discuss with my students, the date that my literature circle is going to start, and then the total number of weeks. Now you could have any number of students in your literature circle, however I am going to recommend that you don't have any less than five students in a group and no more than eight students in a group. Currently my literature circle has seven members, so on the name spots under group information the bottom one for me is just blank. The next page in my literature circle binder is my organizer. This is just a one page summary that shows me what role each student is doing every week of the literature circle so it's all in one place and week after week I know what jobs each student is going to have. So here's what the organizer looks like. Up at the top I have all of the roles filled in and then down on the side I have all of the week numbers with a blank for the number of pages. So all you have to do is fill in the pages for each week and then these squares is where I would write the student names and the students will rotate roles. So whoever is the discussion director week one will be my word wizard during week two, then my super summarizer and so on. Now these organizers do have a bunch of different options. So I have it available for six people in a group, seven people in a group, or eight people in a group. If you have less than six people, you can just pick one of the roles to omit. I also have it available for a multiple number of weeks. So I have it available for six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, and 12 weeks. I also included some ones that are pre-filled out. So this is what that looks like. Basically, it's the other way around. Instead of the roles being at the top, the student names are at the top. So it's much, much quicker. All you have to do is fill in the student names you'll notice the roles are already filled out for you and then again over on the side you just insert the number of pages each week and again I have that available for six weeks through 12 weeks so no matter what length of time your literature circle is I've got you covered the next page in my literature circle binder is an outline of all of the common core state standards that are addressed by a typical literature circle so again in order to keep it versatile I did include the reading literature and speaking and listening standards from first all the way through fifth grade so no matter what grade you teach I've got you covered with the standards I do want to point out those are just the basic standards that a normal literature circle would cover. However, depending on the text that you choose, you definitely can address more standards just than those listed, but that's a good starting point for you. 
The next page I have in my literature circle binder is my group guidelines. These are just seven quick rules that I have for literature circles. I do like to keep it on display when we meet and we do go over it every single time we meet just to make sure my students understand. I also included a page of discussion starters. So again, you can keep these on display when you meet with your group and these are really good for if your students are having trouble discussing that section of text, you can use these and your students can use these in order to guide their discussion. The next page in my literature circle binder is a quick overview of all of the roles that are included and it's all on one page so it's really easy for you to reference. I personally choose to have six roles within my literature circle. So I have a discussion director, a word wizard, a super summarizer, an incredible illustrator, a clever connector, and a passage picker. Again, if you have less than six students, you can just pick one of those roles to omit. You can either omit a different one each week or you can decide to not use one of the roles at all. It's totally flexible. You have to pick what's gonna work for your group. If your literature circle has more than six students, I just recommend doubling up on one of the roles. So like I said, my literature circle right now has seven members. So each week I actually have two incredible illustrators. If you have eight students, the other one I would recommend doubling up on is the Clever Connector, only because each student's going to come with different background knowledge and they're going to be able to make different connections to the text. So here's what that page looks like. Again, it just has a short description for each one of the roles, but I like to have them all on one page so it's much easier to reference if needed. But I did want to create pages that had more detailed descriptions of each role with an example for students to reference, especially if it's their first time doing a literature circle. Here's what the page looks like for the discussion director. So up at the top, I have information about this role. Basically, the discussion director's job is to lead the discussion during the literature circle. So they have to come up with a list of questions to ask their group. In the middle, I have a couple things to remember. Number one, they want to make sure they pick questions that make their group members think deeper, and then they want to make sure everyone in the group participates. At the bottom, I did include just a couple of examples of questions, so if the students get stuck, these can be used to help them guide their thinking. So here's what the role sheet looks like for the word wizard. Up at the top, again, just about this role, the word wizard is responsible for finding difficult, tricky, or unusual words in the text. They first have to think about what they think the word means and then use a dictionary to look up the real definition and then use it in a sentence. So here, things to remember is they want to look in the dictionary for the correct pronunciation of the word. I think it's really important that students know how to do that. And they want to pick words that are interesting or new. And down at the bottom, I do have an example for them. So they just find the word, they record the page number, they write down what they think it means, they use a dictionary to look up the definition, and then they use the word in a sentence. The next role is a super summarizer, and again, it has the same layout. They are responsible for writing a summary of the section of text, and I said they have to use at least four sentences. So some things to remember is they only want to write the summary for that section. So if you're organizing your literature circle by chapters, they're only going to write a summary for that chapter, not the entire book so far. And I want them to think about what comes first, next, then, and last. And again, I just wrote a short summary to kind of show them the structure that I'm looking for. Then the incredible illustrator is next. So for about this role, they're responsible for picking one scene from the text and they have to create a very detailed drawing and write a couple sentences just to explain their drawing. Some things to remember is they need to pick either an important, funny, or interesting part and their drawing needs to have a lot of details and be colored very neatly. I stress the fact that they have to take their time with this. And down here I gave them an example. I have this available both in black and white and in color. And over here I have just a couple sentences explaining the illustration as an example. The next role is the Clever Connector. The Clever Connector is responsible for making connections from the text to people they know, other books they've read, TV shows or movies they've seen, or experiences they've had. And I want them to remember that the connections need to be deep, so making connections to the character's feelings or emotions. And then down here I did give an example of a connection. Now in the product, I did include these roll tags. So basically they're just circles with each roll name on them. I recommend printing them out on cardstock and laminating them for durability. And then I just hole punch them and I attach them to a lanyard. These are not a necessity, but I really like to have them for my students to wear during the literature circle, just to identify who has each role and my students really enjoy wearing them. Then I have a response page for each role. So this is the discussion director. And again, I put just a short summary of what the role is responsible for up at the top so the students can easily access it when they're working on it. They have to write down the title, the author, and the chapter that we are working on. And then here is where they would record their five discussion questions. 
This is the word wizard. Again, just a short summary of it up at the top. They record the title, author, and chapter, and then down here they fill out the word, the page number, what they think it means, the definition, and they use it in a sentence, and I make them find at least three words. Next is the super summarizer. So again, I have the little blurb about it at the top. They fill out the title, author, and chapter, and then down here they write their summary, and I actually included those beginning words for them to make sure they were following that format. Next is the incredible illustrator. So again, blurb at the top. They record the title, author, and chapter, and then they have a spot for their illustration and their description underneath. Then it's the clever connector, blurb at the top, title, author, and chapter again, and then I make them find three connections for that section of text. Last is the passage picker. Again, the top part looks the same, and then they have to find three different passages, and for each one they record the page, the first couple words that it starts with, and they explain why they picked that passage. My goal in making this binder was really to make it very versatile so it can be used with any grade level, so that's why the role response pages are pretty generalized. Now the last part of the binder is the rubric. So again, I included a couple different versions of the rubric so you can figure out what works best for you. So this is just a one page sheet that has all of the different scoring. I included the categories preparedness, discussion, listening, and then a spot for comments. And I have a description for each point level what that category should look like. I have another page that basically has that same rubric, but up at the top I have a spot to record the student name, the book title, the role, and the chapter, and then I have that chart underneath, so all you have to do is circle the points for each one, and you have a spot to leave comments. And just to save you time, I also have a version of it with the role already filled out for you, so it just saves one of those steps. So if you choose that rubric, basically you would have a separate rubric for each student each week. And I thought that was kind of a lot of papers and a lot of copies to be making. So I did want to make one that had all of the group members all on one page. So this is another choice of rubric for you. This one, basically you put the book title and the chapter up at the top, and then I have a spot for each student. And again, I have this available for six all the way up to eight students, and the roles are already filled in for you. So again, here are your categories, preparedness, discussion, and listening, and over here, all you do is circle their score of one, two, three, or four. Those are all of the pages that I keep in my literature circle binder. I just keep them in page protectors right here so it's all in one place and it's easy for me to access. Now, I use the binder in order to organize all of my materials, and then each of my students have a folder that organizes all of their materials. Again, because I organize my groups by color, the color of their folder matches the color of the group. So this group is my blue group. They all have these blue plastic three-prong folders in order to hold all of their materials. So the first page that I include in their folder is this student organizer. I put their name in the title of the book, and basically for each week I tell them what pages we're reading, and I assign their role. So they are able to look for any week and figure out what their role will be. And to make it easier on you, again, I did include a version that has all of the roles already filled out, just so it's one less step for you to actually do. After that organizer page, I do include the group guidelines and the discussion starters, so my students each have them in their folder for them to easily access. The next few pages that I include are those role example pages, that way my students have access to them as well, and they know what to do for each role, and they don't have any excuses for not getting it done. After that, I include all of the role response pages. What I like to do is put them in the order that that student is going to complete them. So if the student is gonna start with the discussion director, that's the first role response page they have in their folder. If the student is gonna start as a super summarizer, that's the first page that they have in their folder. That way it's all in order and they don't get confused on what role they're doing each week. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about storing your materials. My favorite way to organize all of my student materials are with these Sterilite bins. I think I originally got them at Walmart, but they are available on Amazon. I'll put the link to them down in the description, and I like them because they have these colored labels on the front, and since I organize my groups by color, that makes a lot of sense for me. This is where I store all of their books. I don't let my students actually hold on to the books. Basically, they take it out of this bin when they need it and then they put it back only because my students are in second grade. A lot of them have not built up a lot of responsibility yet and I don't want them losing my books. So I do have them return them when they're done, but my students have access to this all day long. They can get up and get their book whenever they need it and then put it back. In the Sterilite bin is also where I store their lanyards with their roll cards that they wear each week. That way it's all in one place and I don't have to worry about them losing them. Now, the unfortunate thing is these Sterilite bins have a different color for each different size. 
I did not want to buy a bunch of different sizes in order to get the different colored labels. The labels are all the same and they fit on all the bins no matter what size they are. So I'm going to tell you what I did. I don't necessarily recommend you do it too. Don't judge me. But basically I went into Walmart and I took the labels off all the different bins to get the colors that I needed and I replaced them with these. I kind of feel bad about it but at the same time sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. So if you're looking to get different colors for your different bins that's definitely a possibility for you. Just don't tell anyone that that idea came from me. Unfortunately, that Sterilite bin is not quite big enough to hold their folders. So I use that just to hold their books and the roll lanyards. The student folders get stored in a Sterilite drawer system that I have. And basically that group has a drawer. They store their folders in there. They get them out when they need them and then they put them back. Hopefully you found this helpful, especially if you have never used literature circles before or you didn't think you could do it in the primary grades, you definitely can. If you have any questions on anything that I said, please leave me a comment or you can email me at pocketfullofprimary at gmail.com and I would be happy to help you. Again, every page that I referenced in this video is available in my literature circle binder pack on TPT. I'll have the link to it down in the description if you're interested. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you guys next weekend.